Hello everyone, I am Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team and I would like to welcome you to the Inject Creativity Live Show. This is an online show for educators interested in digital creativity. This show is live on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel as well as other social media and past recordings can be viewed via bit.ly slash adobe dash inject. Any teacher, whether an Adobe user or not, in any K-12 or higher education sector and any subject area is welcome. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Wraithke. Well, thank you very much, Rob, and welcome everyone to the Inject Creativity Live show, a show aimed to inspire educators to enhance digital literacy, communication, and creativity skills for themselves and for their students. My usual co-host, Erin Wraithke, is not well today, so we wish her all the very best, and I've told her to rest up and get fit and be well enough for our next episode. Fortunately, though, Adobe Education Leader Michelle Dennis has been able to step in. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Tim, and a special welcome to everyone who's joined us live on Wednesday, the 21st of April, 2021, via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel, as well as the Australasian Adobe and Education Facebook group. We encourage you to say hi in the chat. Um, let us know where you're from, where you teach, and what subject areas. While you're in the chat sharing a bit about yourself, we'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander elders past, present and future, as well as all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first peoples in our land, the first scientists and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. During this episode, Adobe Education Leader Stephen Colbert from Melbourne will be with us. And our Education Thought Leader for this episode is Adobe Education Leader Paul McLean from New Zealand. Adobe Education Leader Dr. Bronwyn Wade Leewen from Macquarie University in Sydney will also be sharing with us. And we have a very special guest with us tonight, the first school student to appear on the show. That's right, Michelle. Angelina from Asquith Girls High School in Sydney was the winner of last week's Adobe Holiday Video Challenge. We'll be watching her winning one minute film as well as hearing from her. Before we hear from our guests, let's see who has joined us live for this show so far and has said hi in the chat. Now note that we are getting the chat feed from those of you on Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube, but not always those on Twitter. So if you're joining us from Twitter and you want your comments, questions and your answer to the coming quiz question posted and published by us during the chat show, you might want to jump out of Twitter and onto the Adobe for Education YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Adobe for Education. And I've just noticed that uh, John from Toowoomba, who's a regular with us, is saying, good evening, all. Great to be here with you again. Hope you are all well. Well, we are, except for Erin. We have our thoughts for her, and hopefully she is feeling better very soon. And greetings from India as well. Now, Rahul, I'm not sure if you've actually been on this show before, so a double welcome to you. And if you have, I apologize, but it's lovely to have you. Greetings from Mumbai, India, physics lecturer, Mumbai at Rahul, and it's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you very much for joining us. And of course, oh, Tim Cosgrove, all the way from Toronto <laughs> in Canada, where not only is it Minus two degrees, he's telling us in the chat, but I imagine it's probably only about, I don't know, 3.30 in the, in the morning as well. Tim, it's just outstanding the way that you contribute and, and be part of this show. We're looking forward to catching up with you again as soon as this show is over in our fireside chat. And John is saying hello to Tim. And he's also saying where he's from, Toowoomba, Queensland, digital tech and aviation teacher. And I know you, we've got other people who are watching us live at the moment, so feel free to just to go into your chat and tell us where you're from and what you teach. We'd love to connect with you very soon. Let's just go into our stinger, slightly modified first stinger for tonight. We 
hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live. Thanks, Rob. Let's now welcome our good friend and the Inject Creativity Live moderator and techie whiz, Jerry Wong. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone, and welcome. I will be looking out for your comments and questions in the chat and posting the most relevant ones. To encourage you to use the live chat, I have an Adobe-related quiz question for you. In 2005, Adobe added Flash and Dreamweaver to their suite of applications because they acquired which company? Great question, Jerry, and I'm looking forward to seeing if we get some really quick responses to that question. No responses just yet. Let's see if you can be the first one to give us the answer. You might want to read the question out again for us, Jerry. Sure. In 2005, Adobe added Flash and Dreamweaver to their suite of applications because they acquired which company? And John from Toowoomba, congratulations. He's a regular winner. <laughs> I think that deserves a round of applause. Well done, John. Well done. Well done. <laughs> was enough for media. And Michelle, you were actually telling me a quick little story before about your relationship with Macromedia. Oh, when I was a student, back when software was a lot more expensive than the roughly about $20 per student nowadays, um, I couldn't afford any of those amazing programs. And one very kind person at a conference handed me the CDs for Macromedia and really got me started on this journey into multimedia. I loved it so much. <laughs> Absolutely. And I do remember Macromedia Director and working with Macromedia Flash and Macromedia Dreamweaver before Adobe acquired them. So that was in the days of CD-ROMs when we were actually creating CDs and making them really creative and interactive because Macromedia Director was probably the best app at the time to do that. And apparently it's still out there. Apparently there are still people wow. making Making things with uh, Macromedia Director, which it, it blows me away, which is just wonderful. Really it makes great. me feel better. I'm not so old then, surely. <laughs> exactly right. All right, Jerry, keep an eye on the chat as they're coming through. Anything that's that's relevant, bring them up for us. You're watching Inject Creativity Live. Let's welcome our three teacher guests for this episode. Stephen, welcome back to this show. For those who haven't met you before, tell us how long you've been an Adobe education leader, where you teach, and what subject areas you focus on. All right, uh, I've been at AEL since or well, started this year, end of last year, so it's very short, let's say. Uh, I'm a teacher of mostly this year, I'm teaching English, so English is an additional language, uh, English literacy and uh, English language and English straight. So my goal is to, you know, teach all the Englishes. I think I just need literature and then my chessboard will be complete. Uh, and I've completely forgotten the third portion of that question, Tim. What was it? <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you another one because, Stephen, since we last met, a big change has happened in your world. You've become a parent. That deserves a big congratulations. There we go. That's you. <laughs> That'll do. Um, how, how's life as a parent? Uh, it's good, yeah. My, uh, I just had my first day back at school, started this term, and uh, I had the best night's sleep I've had since baby was born nine weeks ago. I was able to hand off baby to mum and go back to sleep. I had eight eight hours sleep, and for anyone who's uh, like you, Tim, been through that journey, you know that uh, eight hours sleep, you can do almost anything on, on a decent night's sleep, and not so much without it, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's great. And we do congratulate you and your, your lovely wife and and uh, we you know, hope that everything goes well with you and your young family. And Jack Jin is saying congratulations, and so is John. So oh, there we go. The community is congratulating you. Nice. Michelle. Oh, well, yes, we've also got Paul. So welcome back again, Paul. Tell us Hi, briefly Paul. about rare innovations in New Zealand. Yep, I'm still carrying on with rare. Um, completely free advisory and consultancy service to assist schools with their uh, COVID and beyond digital response and I'm also teaching at Ruapeo College and we've set up a um, what we call the Digital Mastery Institute there uh, to connect the school to the community through real world education. 
And we're looking forward to finding out a bit more about your journey as we've been hearing about it gradually. In fact, I believe, Paul, that we're about the 12 month and uh, the first year anniversary, it was 12 months ago when things really got started for you in this journey. Yeah, absolutely. We um, we put together that digital um, mastery article about about a year ago and um, got a huge response uh, from schools on, on really um, getting to grips with or grappling with that big shift that occurred. Um, dealing with um, digital education um, in response to COVID. So it's, it's gone gangbusters since then. Terrific. Well, congratulations. And Dr. Bronwyn Wade Lee, you and it's lovely to welcome you back again. Tell us a bit about yourself for those who haven't met you before. Well, hi, everyone. So nice to be here tonight. Um, I teach at Macquarie University and I'm a director of STEAM Ahead Australia, which is looking at science, technology, engineering, arts and maths particularly focusing on the creative arts and how to bring those into university and also into schools. Wonderful. And uh, Bronwyn, Stephen and Paul, I'm going to ask you the same question here. What does being an Adobe education leader mean to you? Let's start with you, Stephen. For me, it's easy. It's just being part of, part of a community and uh, the more the merrier. You know, it's kind of like as Michelle and Tim would likely be able to speak to us kind of like the people involved in this kind of stuff, speaking at conferences, talking about technology and so forth. It's a small little bunch uh, and having, you know, common forums to share around is really important. So, uh, and for me, especially Adobe is always the, the top end of the kind of technology type of stuff. I spend a lot of time explaining to teachers, you know, how they can use PowerPoint to make videos and it's sort of, you know, I mean, it, you can do it, but, um, uh, as much as possible, you know, you like to be up at the top end working with the top range of tools rather than, you know, an iPhone on a clip or something like that. So I try to stay stay up to date as much as I can. Thanks, Stephen. Paul? Oh, I think um, I might have said this before, but it's um, being, being involved in the whole program is constant motivation and constant hope and belief, if you like, um, when, when you're dealing with schools where tradition is, is dominant, um, tapping into the AEL community and the education forums just gives you that sense of uh, drive all the time, which is which is really needed um, sometimes. So uh, thank you very much. And how about you, Bronwyn? Oh, well, what I like about it is all the new skills I've learnt. So um, people are very supportive and um, I love doing the different programs, but then moving into my workplace at the university or in schools and being able to then educate others and transfer those skills across. So um, it's very exciting. I, I just uh, never miss one of these um, sessions. So thank you. Lovely. Well, Stephen, can you give us a teaser about what you'll be sharing with us later in the show? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll be talking a little bit about Adobe Stock, how you can use it with teachers and with students, uh, and also just trying to reflect a little bit on my journey from a pen and paper teacher to a, a digital capable teacher. Nice. Looking forward to it. Paul, what will you be sharing? Um, I'm going to share a prelude to the follow-up article I did, um, What Does Education Leadership Need to Look Like uh, for COVID and Beyond? And this is on transactional leadership versus transformative leadership. Excellent. And Bronwyn, what will you be telling us about? Well, I'll be a bit left field here. Um, we've mm -hmm. got Earth Day happening tomorrow. And so we've decided to do the first longest ever digital fresco mural in the world. So I'll be talking about how we did that and uh, how it's coming along. Great. Well, we're looking forward to hearing from all of you later in this episode. You're watching Inject Creativity Live. as we clear our guests. And uh, just to remind people, last week we ran the first ever Adobe Holiday Video Challenge for senior secondary students and teachers from the New South Wales Department of Education and the Victorian Department of Education and Training. This event involved two full days of live online Premiere Pro training, as well as the opportunity for students to showcase a one minute film at the end of the week, promoting one of the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. We had about 140 students and teachers register from about 40 different schools and eight finalists who submitted for the showcase with a hope to win an iPad Air and Apple Pencil, as well as a 12-month subscription to Adobe Stock as the major prize. 
So congratulations to Angelina for coming first with her film titled Goal 14, Riley for getting second place with his entry called Maybe, and Jimmy for coming third with his film Climate. Here's a winning student film from Angelina from Asquinth Girls High School in Sydney titled Goal 14. The Great Blue, covering more than three quarters of the Earth's surface, is home to one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world. Housing more than 200,000 species of tumors still yet to be discovered, the ocean is suffocatingly beautiful. Everything from the weather to the climate, the food we eat and the air we breathe is being provided for and regulated by the ocean. And yet, in return, all it gets is the remains of human greed and ignorance. Every year, more than 17.6 billion pounds of plastic leaks into the waterway, eventually ending up in the ocean. In this one minute alone, a garbage truck full of plastic is being dumped. And that is the least of it. From the over-exploitation of fish and other resources to rising sea levels as a result of climate change, our oceans, our sea and our wildlife are dying. And who is to blame but us? And it is... Great. Oh, we don't need that again. Uh, pleasure to welcome the creator of the winning film, Angelina from Asquith Girls High School in Sydney. Hi, Angelina. And congratulations on winning the inaugural Adobe Holiday Video Challenge. Thank you. Angelina, oh, thank you. well done. And congratulations from me as well. Um, I was just wondering, can you tell us why you decided to get involved with the Adobe Holiday Video Challenge? Mm -hmm. Um, actually, one of the main reasons as to why I got involved with the challenge was to challenge myself. You know, I wanted to try, test the waters and try different softwares that, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Angelina, how much experience had you had previously with Adobe Premiere Pro? Um, if I had to be honest, I, was, I wasn't very familiar with the software. I was, even though I was used to you know, making similar videos, I was more used to using DaVinci Resolve and After Effects. But, you know, like, as I've done it, I found it to be a very flexible and very user-friendly program. Wow. So what part of the Adobe Holiday Video Challenge program did you enjoy the most? Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed the, writing the dialogue and watching everything come together. It's, you know, very rewarding to see something that you've created come to life. And, you know, the workshops were very educational and very informative and really helped to make the Adobe process a lot easier. Well, you had an outstanding trainer, didn't you? Like, it's superb teaching, of course. <laughs> that was me, by the way. And yeah. So what is the real <laughs> challenge, Angelina, during the week of this mm -hmm. challenge event? I think one of the main hurdles of the video making process was trying to, you know, not only deliver the message of, you know, try to call it call to action, but also trying to bring all the elements together, like trying to find the right pieces. Mm -hmm. Well, how important do you think it is for young people to develop their video literacy skills? Um, I think often when we hear the words video literacy, you know, we often assume that it's about bringing all the elements together, you know, trying to match it with the audio and the things. But I think it's more than just composition. I think, you know, it's attention to detail, storytelling. And, you know, especially if you're posting it on an online platform, it's about being socially aware of your impact on the world and the audience. And I think, especially in this day and age where technology is having a greater influence on society, I think, you know, it's a very valuable skill to have. Absolutely, wow. Angelina. Really, really appreciate your responses there. Uh, I think I mentioned during the course that video is now considered a literacy itself, not just a digital literacy, but a literacy. And uh, it's because of the, I'd say, revolution of YouTube. And now that everyone is going to YouTube as a first place to go to to find out information, mm -hmm. that being video literate is becoming so important in just yeah. about every area of society now a question without notice angelina you're in year 12 now what are your plan what do you hope to be doing when you finish school um i actually want to go into design well i want to well more technology based rather than um 
like the in, like I want to go into mechanical engineering so that I can design the next emerging technology. Excellent. Wow, Michelle, you'd be loving to hear that response, wouldn't you? We need we definitely need more girls designing our future. So I'm so excited to hear that that's what you're thinking of doing. And that's so cool. And Angelina, the skills that you've developed now, the video literacy skills, they're going to help you so much in the future, no matter what you end up doing. But if you become a designer, if you become a, a, an engineer, to be able to communicate what you create, it's so important. And I talk to science students at universities uh, all over the Asia Pacific region, and, and I tell them, look, it doesn't matter how good you are at science, if you can't communicate what you have been able to produce as a scientist, people aren't going to respond. People aren't going to learn from your amazing creations. And, and, and it's just so important for anyone in any area to learn how to develop these communication skills. So congratulations again on winning the inaugural Adobe Holiday Video Challenge. I think that deserves a big round of applause from everyone. And of course, Angelina, you have now picked up an iPad Air, an Apple Pencil, and 12 months mm -hmm. free subscription to Adobe Stock. So make the most of it. Mm. I will. Now, Thank you. Next up, we've got Adobe Education Leader, Stephen Colbert, who will be telling us how he works with Adobe Stock. Hi, folks. We are about to be inspired by an AEL, an Adobe Education Leader. AELs are passionate about the use of Adobe tools to inspire creative learning and teaching experiences in the delivery of either primary, secondary or post-secondary curricula. The first step to becoming an AEL is to be an ACE, an Adobe Creative Educator, via edx.adobe.com slash adobe-creative-educator. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be an ACE, just a teacher interested in engaging students through creative digital learning experiences. The ACE program is a free international micro-credentialing program it only takes a few hours to earn your level one badge and the focus is on creativity rather than adobe please share this program with your colleagues and get involved who knows you may one day also become an adobe education leader and it is a delight to welcome stephen colbert back to this show Last time you were on the show as a special guest was in June 10th last year. Um, since then, you've become an Adobe Education Leader and, like we talked about before, a parent. So over to you, Stephen. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, hello, lovely people, I always like to say as we kick off. Um, so obviously the topic's Adobe Stock. I was um, previous iteration of this presentation was just basically how to use it, but I figured since we're dealing with such a high level of educator in the group that I'd you know take it a bit more reflective. And I mean, following on from Angelina is probably the perfect little uh, segue that we could have because you know video literacy is the kind of thing that I'm all about. And I imagine there was perhaps even some stock footage in the sort of stuff that she just showed. So I won't ramble on about myself for too much. Uh, same as always, I'm interested in research, flip learning, instructional video. And I'm currently working on a book called Empowering Teachers and Democratizing Schooling. I uh, co-editing, not writing. That's an important distinction. So instructional video is my big thing. Uh, I've just hit half a million uh, views on my YouTube channel, which is just me teaching students stuff, English, all those sort of things that I teach, and occasionally professional development you know, of this type. Uh, and to me, it's important. It's something I've been doing for you know, it's probably my fifth year of carrying on with it. Uh, and so obviously the Adobe Education Leader program is, uh, you know, right up my alley. So this is kind of, uh, this is a room at our school. Uh, we call it the uh, AV room, which is probably, you know, quite old fashioned language, really, if you think about it. But we've got our light board. We've got, you know, a whole bunch of stuff in there. We've got our swivel cameras, green screen. You know, we do all that sort of stuff uh, in the top right hand corner. Uh, that was me observing an extra at our school. And this was um, a teacher that obviously wasn't in the room teaching uh, maths maths to this particular student. And the whole point was that the maths faculty went in there, stood behind this uh, piece of glass 
and basically did a kind of co-teaching that sort of uh, was for me personally quite exciting because it was kind of like you had um, backseat teaching, which is something that I think we probably could benefit from a, a fair bit to have in our, you know, in the rest of our teaching lives, but they'd have someone explaining the concept and then afterwards someone would say, oh, I, I don't like that formula or, you know, your, your board work needs work and so forth. So these are the sort of things that give me energy working with teachers and using technology as a conduit to do that. So what we're going to talk about today is basically a little bit of a reflection, a little bit of how you can use Adobe Stock in your own practice. Uh, and the transition I've made, as I said, in the, the mini promo, let's say, of moving from uh, pen and paper to moving to a more digital way of doing things. So uh, basically, instead of just working from PowerPoint or Word or you know the Google alternatives, um, I'm starting to build up a bank of resources of stock video, music, images, and PowerPoint slides as the last resort when, uh, you know, when it comes down to it so that you've got a little bit more of a dynamic toolbox, I guess, than just uh, words on a page, which you've for some reason put on a screen. So uh, to pick up sort of Angelina's example, uh, I like to give my students a bank of stock footage for things when we're gonna be creating a, a product, uh, just so that the barrier for entry is relatively low. And so the same way that I would do it for myself, I go out of my way to do that for my students also. And so depending on what tools they're using, I find with the Adobe Suite, there's multiple choices of entry, uh, but giving them stock footage just really improves the polish of what they're able to produce. And you know, it makes it a little bit more real world rather than for me as a non-media teacher, um, you know, I don't have cameras, cameras that I can send them out with. And since mobile phones are bizarrely banned in, uh, Victoria, that's also not an option. So that's an alternative. Similarly, keep keep some copyright free music around. You don't want you sort of want to be upskilling your students in the kind of the way that copyrights use. You can see obviously because they all have generic names. I've given them very uh, bizarre titles so that it's clear what kind of thing you might be listening to when you open it up. And so just to take you through my journey uh, that I sort of forewarned, I guess I'm often talking about very simple, quick, nasty kind of video using an iPhone, using whatever laptop teachers have, preferably doing it without any editing. Uh, just, you know, if you stuff it up, stop and start again. That's basically what I am training people to do uh, in my sort of at my school and in conference settings around, around Australia and perhaps the world. So the whole focus is webcam, screen recording. That's it. Don't edit it. And then I always sort of say, you know, oh, but if you want, you could use Camtasia, Premiere Pro, Spark, those sort of things. I realize now my logos are probably outdated at this point. Um, but, to, and I'm, it's almost like I've become uh, habituated to the fact that I try and make it easy for people. And so I found that I've been limiting my own practice as sort of a multimedia type person. And so, so as a result... Yeah. Sorry to interrupt there, for a minute, mate. Uh, are you actually sharing your screens? Because we're we're only seeing a presenter mode, uh, oh. and I was just worried that you were sort of leading into something that you're sharing. But um, I'll just bring it up yeah, again. I can see my screen. You can't see my screen. No, we're just seeing oh. one screen, and then all of your other. So we're sort of seeing it in presenter mode, like it's not actually presenting as. Oh, screen. that's that's the classic mistake. All right, let me try it again. See how you go. Alrighty, there's nothing worse than that, is there? You're sitting there looking at the, uh, oh yeah, maybe, oh yeah, because I was doing window. Oh, rookie mistake. Oh, uh, I think. It was working well when we before I we went in and rehearsed. Yeah, day. and then the internet dropped and then we had to pick it back up. All right, so here's where we were. Here's where we went. Here's stuff uh -huh. I was talking about that you couldn't see. That makes sense. <laughs> All right. Thank oh, you. Well, it should, you know. Um, so this is the light board in the room and such. Is building resources is what the students have access to. Bank of Music, normally it's very low, low barrier to entry. Old logos, yada yada yada. We're there. We get it. We make sense. Um, so basically, for me as a teacher creating video, so I'm probably at about 600 odd videos at this point that I've made, um, and invariably I'm still in in an old fashioned way of producing things in PowerPoint or Word. And the goal is to transition to basically be building video presentations in edit rather than 
uh, in some strange, bizarre, backwards way, just because it's uh, that's like what teachers do, essentially. So that's my goal. That's where I'm at. Uh, and so Adobe Stock, how we get there is basically, and obviously study is probably not the most exciting example of the way that you could be using stock footage, um, but essentially. Uh, what I found when I make an instructional video, uh, invariably what you're making is essentially a podcast. It's uh, you know a lot of me, my face talking. Occasionally text pops up or replaces my face or is you know PIP picture in picture as part of the footage. And so as an alternative, um, previously to you know Adobe Stock, there'd be a lot of you know downloading from YouTube and kind of work around things that were messy and not especially clean. And so as an alternative, we've got Adobe Stock and I just go to free, I go to videos, I license the videos, and then I label them in a similar way that I did to the audio. You make it super clear what's going on. So you say, you know, three people talking at a table, discussing what's visible on a whiteboard or something like that. So, uh, and I'm going to attempt to show you an example, but who knows if it will work. Oh, it looks terrible, quality. Um, so. I won't show you an example, but basically very low quality effort. Uh, the graphics, trust me, are much better. This is a much better cam camera than that. Uh, but the idea is, so this one's about study skills for English language. And so rather than just have me yabbering away at down the barrel of the camera, I've interspersed some uh, stock footage to make it a bit more visually dy dynamic. Um, I just think uh, our students, as Tim said earlier in the piece, um, YouTube is sort of the the entry entry into kind of everything that we do, and so they have a certain expectation of what video production looks like. So if we turn up and do, uh, you know, a lazy vlog style type video uh, with limited editing, then obviously they're going to be less receptive to that. Uh, this one's about referencing quotes and within a speech. So I've got some speech footage as examples, and sort of stock footage and also specific footage from there. Stephen, I'll get you just to press that little hide button too so we get rid of that window that's there, that little string. There we go. Beautiful. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Will I ever recover from the embarrassment? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. And so as I round out the uh, the end of a mostly lacking in visuals presentation, um, here's just some other things that you can chase up if this any of this kind of stuff, instructional video, appeals to you. I'm not really sure how much uh, the teachers are involved here are using video in their directly in their teaching practice. Uh, but this is some other stuff that I've found useful. Uh, so there's a, a Monash course that came out during COVID. It's very tech centric. So it's um, the pedagogy behind it is probably not as cutting edge as you might like since it's an online teaching interactivity course. Uh, but that's a good starting place if you're sort of heading down the sort of university route around instructional videos and you might like to be doing further study in it. There's a flip learning course that uh, I'm a part of that similarly gives you a bit of an on-train to how you might use video within your class, whether it's you know flipped or remote, adult, uh, primary school, secondary school, regardless of where you want to leverage it. Uh, and then working with, with Adobe, in fact, and ClickView, I created a course on it that is you know, uses stock footage, not surprisingly, and it's done very well. And then the last one, most obviously, is I've got it labeled here as ClickView, but it's actually an Adobe uh, collaboration and it's the teaching online masterclass. So all of these places are things that I personally uh, leveled up my understanding of instructional video. And if that's something that you're interested in, either reach out to me or chase up any of these resources. And uh, as I go to um, hide my embarrassment at failing to share a screen at midway through 2020, uh, that is my presentation. Uh, such as it was, that's me talking mostly without the presentation being visible. So, no, that's thank fine. For a couple, of, a couple of questions for you. Um, Adobe Stock is not something that we've really um, promoted to teachers a lot, mainly because it doesn't come free to schools uh, generally across the board, unless a school has actually purchased it specifically for their teachers, which does happen. Um, so. How, how do you get around the fact that it's not a free resource? So that's why I would go out of my, well, pay for it. That's the answer, Tim. <laughs> um, but no, 
Um, and then uh, use that to provide it to students where possible uh, as a bit of a workaround. Uh, but yeah, I think it's worth paying for. Like there's so, there's a lot of stuff I've been doing on copyright and kind of, you know, we're all meant to be explaining to students how copyright works and why it's important and all, all those sort of things. So to then uh, take a step back and say, well, you know, here's, here's, here's something that I ripped off the internet from Google Images or downloaded from a YouTube video it seems to me to be a reductive step. So perhaps that's too future future minded, but I think um, as well as the Adobe suite, it might be worth, uh, you know, the various educational bodies that be to also invest in Adobe stock for the same reason. But perhaps that's too political. John's just uh, put in a comment here. Any chance of getting hold of those last four slides, Stephen? I missed one of them. So um, not just those last four slides, but the, the links that were in those last four slides. In fact, all of the links that you provided, if there's any opportunity uh, for you while we're finishing off the show to put them into a chat so that uh, people can see them. But better still, after the show, we're going to jump into the fireside chat, which uh, won't be recorded, but that'll be a good place in Blue Jeans just to bring in those key resources, copy and paste them into the chat so we can grab them uh, because there were some really terrific resources there to share. Michelle, anything you wanted to add to and ask Stephen at all? Um, I did want to ask, um, in terms of um, the way our students are with video, do you, are you notice a change in their um, attention span? How long do you normally make your videos? That's, that's the age-old question that I get asked by everyone everywhere I go. Um, the, the first rule is, whatever you think it is, it's less than that. Uh, the second rule is, like, from YouTube statistics, we know that it's somewhere between two minutes and three minutes, so like way shorter than anyone ever thinks. And so a big part of making video for students is basically slicing it up as small as you can because, you know, every teacher, or not me personally, I'm not a big lecture type person, except weirdly during professional development because that's how we do it. But um, every teacher has the ability to sort of waffle on about their specialist subject. And the hard part for most teachers I find is preparing, it's in the same way you would lesson plan, making videos, planning your videos so that they're short, they're one idea per video, and they're short, using stock stock footage to back it up, make it a bit more visually exciting, maybe music thrown in there, but yeah, make it accessible and attention span appropriate for the age of students that you have. So shorter is better, and two to three minutes is the goal. We also have a rule in multimedia production. It's called the seven second rule. It's not just about the length of your video as such, although everything Stephen said is absolutely accurate. It's about how long you have an image on the screen for, because our attention span on average is seven seconds. If you have an image on the screen for longer than seven seconds, you're gonna to start to lose the interest of your audience. And that's where applications like Premiere Pro and Rush and Spark Video are great, because you can just keep changing the images while you keep the dialogue going if you need to for your full two and a half, three minutes, but the images need to change regularly to keep the interest of your audience. And that's a fundamental rule that I taught Angelina and all the people that were doing the Premiere Pro course with me last week. Stephen, thank you so much for your time. And we know this time of the night is a really important time to be with your baby. And uh, we'll absolutely uh, forgive you if you if you do have to leave us but if you are able to get onto the uh, fireside chat just to give us those resources that would be most appreciative michelle anything else from you no thank you very much stephen it was great terrific you're watching inject creativity live oh thank you very much rob michelle tell us about the get to know your adobe apps webinar series it's led by Adobe Education Leaders and Adobe Solution Consultants. The Get to Know Your Adobe Apps webinar series returns next week. Find out more about these live and recorded webinars via bit.ly slash adobe webinars 21. And we won't play another stinger because we're going to bring Bronwyn up to the screen in a minute. Macquarie University's Venture Cafe Sydney and Adobe are collaborating on a special project to create the world's longest digital mural to help celebrate Earth Day tomorrow, April 22. So Adobe education leader, Dr. Bronwyn Wade has instigated this project and she's here with us live to tell us more. 
Hi, Bronwyn. Hi. Good. Thank you very much for having me. Tell us about the Earth Day Project, Bronwyn. Well, I'm dying to tell you about the Earth Day Project and anyone else who would like to participate in our Earth Day Project has till midnight tonight to submit an image. And I think, um, Tim, you might have the link there or Jerry might have the link for Venture Cafe. I'm not quite sure. Um, but you need to put in a um, an image. So it all started when we talked to one of the directors at Adobe and um, he said, we've just got a new program and it's called um, Fresco, Adobe Fresco. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I'm a Fresco artist. And so this director said, well, what about we do a joint venture? This is in 2019. And I said, yes, I could do the demonstration of the physical um, fresco in the traditional way. And then we could have the Adobe fresco um, digital happening. And that's exactly what we're doing tomorrow night. So it's a venture that's between um, partners of uh, Adobe, Macquarie University and Rotary where Rotary has actually sourced the music for this video. Um, we've got about 100 images that have already been uploaded by students and our Indigenous people at Macquarie University and others. Um, and what else needs to happen? And then we're going to do the digital as well. So um, it's all very exciting. That's great. Now, Bronwyn, I've got a video here to play. Uh, we won't play the whole thing, but this gives you a sense of what Earth Day is about and some of the artwork that's been contributed also features in this clip. Thank you. Some great work there, Bronwyn, some amazing yeah. artworks. So tell us a bit about some of the artists that have contributed. Yeah, it's been quite exciting. Uh, we have some professional artists um, that you might have seen there that have uh, participated, but um, we worked with um, a lot of students at Macquarie University. Um, the Indigenous people came and worked with us and talked about what the importance is of being on country is all about. And these international students, there are about 40 of them, uh, had never really understood what Australian culture was about. And after that, I showed them the technique of traditional fresco and then they tried a fresco. So a fresco means that it's plaster, wet plaster, and you paint into the plaster before it sets. So the image is set into the wall or into the plaster. And we did the kind of um, Hawaiian way of making a fresco. We added ash. And tomorrow night I'm going to add ash and sandstone. So you can add certain materials to it to just make it different. So the ash turned everything a little bit grey, which gave it that kind of, you know, the planet's dying kind of feel. Um, and they all had to, all the students had to work with a sustainable development goal. So most of them were number 15, which is life on land, or number 14, um, life below sea. So you'll see a lot of them are images like that. Well, Bronwyn, we're looking forward to finding out about the end result and uh, I'll be jumping in and out tomorrow just to see what's been happening and looking forward to finding out more. So thanks again for your contribution and good luck tomorrow at Earth Day. Thank you very much. Hi, folks. Well, it's now time to welcome our education thought leader for their five-minute gem to inspire us and make us think more deeply about the importance of our role as educators. 
Our thought leader for this episode of Inject Creativity Live is Adobe Education Leader, Paul McLean. Paul is Director of the Rare Innovation in New Zealand. This is the start of a new video that Paul's created that outlines some of the amazing work he's doing. Well, COVID has really brought to attention now the quality of investment choices and technology choices in defining a switch between traditional education and content provision online versus a need to deliver a rich 24 seven engaging learning experience, which doesn't necessarily fit the traditional scheduled timetable model. And we need to look no further than the systems design and critical thinking model, which provides a one-to-one -one learning experience empowered now by Adobe technologies, race to the top technologies, which enable educators, boards and principals to get real confidence that when they're not looking and when the students are offline, their real learning is occurring because these technologies empower the learning experience, but they enable monitoring, reporting and quality assessment of engagement and rich digital learning experiences, not just in scheduled sessions, but in offline sessions as well. So some fantastic opportunities, which I'm going to briefly run you, run you through today. Well, there you go, Paul. Good introduction. And share us the, the link to that video when you get an opportunity, probably during the fireside chat afterwards. But, Paul, over to you. I think you're on mute there, Paul. We'll just get you to unmute. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, thank you very much for having me. Um, so today's talk actually um, is, is, is a year in, um, on an anniversary, really, when we put together... Um, digital mastery what does um, educational leadership need to look like um, in respect of covid and beyond so um i've got an article coming out tomorrow i hope which um, puts together those thoughts a year on and what it relates to is uh, what i've found um, around leadership in response to covid is the difference between what i call transactional leadership and transformative leadership so I'm just going to set the scene here slightly, and this has got a few numbers and uh, facts and figures I've pulled together um, based on uh, recent uh, information that's been made available. But over 20 years, um, New Zealand itself has spent um, or invested $214 billion um, in a, a program called NCA, and it's an absolutely fantastic, transformative, one-to-one, -one, humanistic, creative education framework um, with huge, massive cognitive development and uh, competence, competency development potential for schools. And the reason why that's important uh, is because we've got an increased uh, student populace um, from 729,000 uh, all the way through to 816 in recent years, 816,000, and a growing population. Uh, but what's actually happened um, in recent time, our schools have actually reduced in size from 2,700 down to 2,287. And we've had a significant increase in the populace of lower decile communities, poorer circumstances. And we've actually concentrated um, in terms of the data that's been made available to me, Maori and Pacifica, into those weaker funded school areas and um, within those deciles. As a result, we've got a progressive rise um, from 21% to 36% of the unemployment being Maori and Pacifica um, in the unemployment over the last 10 years. So what does that mean? Well, over over the um, World Innovation Index, we've, we've slid in world innovation rankings, which is a real slight to the NCA learning paradigm. We're down to 26 in the world, would you believe? Our spend per pu uh, pupil um, has slid to 46 in the world, and we've actually increased our class sizes as a result of concentrating those schools um, into city areas. We're now 68th in the world in terms of our teacher pupil ratio. That's a real challenge if you want to drive a uh, creative and one to one learning paradigm. So consequently, the, the, the throughput to industry for us um, has taken a bit of a slide as well. And this, this is um, pre COVID numbers, if you like, and we're, we're sort of fearful of what might come through in the, in the next report. But um, our high tech inputs are a reflection of our weak levels of knowledge transfer and knowledge diffusion through the system 67th in the world would you believe so why is this happening and what does that relate to uh, in terms of leadership well despite covid and lots of devices being sent to homes we've got a minimal incentive for schools to actually adopt digital technologies 
We do, however, financially incentivize principals and schools not to deliver NCA itself, would you believe? Instead, we pay them to deliver a role and also low-level grades-based um, awards, if you like, of uh, of um, academic performance. What that actually does, it alienates and stigmatizes those non-academic learners, the creative learners. So from a leadership point of view, and uh, we're actually reinforcing the very model that NCA wasn't um, designed to do it, and we're reinforcing uh, the transactional education paradigm. So from a leadership point of view, what I've noticed through, um, through COVID and beyond is three different types of leadership style, transactional leaders, the transformational leader, and the transformative leader. And I've linked them to the different performance drivers in education. Now, the transactional leader, and I'm going to cover that very, very quickly um, in, as a prelude to the article tomorrow, they're focused on the performance driver of getting the grades, just getting the grades, just getting the grades, and the number of kids in the classrooms. The transformational leader, they'll fo focus on a more aspirational school, but um, focusing on university entrance and the volumes of kids that will go through to universities. That tends to stream the kids. And that transformational leader, however, is still anchored to getting the grades and it's less um, around creative education. But the transformative leader, and this is what's um, starting to occur through different types of demand here, will focus on community pathways, cross-curricular and vocational education, which is strongly linked to the pathways of the future uh, market entrance and also the community prospects. Now, that's absolutely key because of our uh, masthead industries, dairy and tourism, they've come under real pressure as a result of COVID. So just very briefly, I've only got a five minutes slot here today, but um, what I've noticed is the transactional leader, despite COVID, will reinforce the status quo. They'll, they'll impose the policies and tasks of a grades-based sufficiency orientated um, education paradigm, very much box ticking, very much around um, having no discourse in the, in the school for change, and the only beneficiaries really are the, the leaders themselves and transactional leaders who are focused on the grades and the and the, the development of the school in terms of the numbers because they're paid to do so. But um, stepping down to the trans, trans, uh, transformational leader, slightly more visionary, um, but still anchored to a grades based paradigm. They battle the tensions of actually getting students into universities and placements and things like that. But they're battling the, uh, the tension between the grade and the external driver for those university placements and funding and scholarship opportunities. The transformative leader though, so this is where um, a lot of communities now are demanding, and parents and the industry are demanding a different learning um, paradigm in schools. This is where we have orchestrational leaders who are actually driving that community focus around real world learning and cross-curricular and vocational learning. There's not many of them, but um, it's the new type of demand that's actually driving this change, which is fantastic. So COVID's um, an early stage in terms of driving this shift now, but um, in terms of the response in the article, we're going to get some thoughts on how to drive that through new PLD opportunities. Change is afoot. I like yes. that. That's, that's terrific. And, and Paul, uh, it's been 12 months since that initial article and you've traveled a long way in that 12 months and we've really been enjoying being part of the journey with you thank you yeah and no, it's uh, it's been fantastic i'm down in the in this in the middle of nowhere but i call it the center of everything now in terms of driving this digital mastery um, institute in the middle of new zealand and it's absolutely fantastic and the response uh, continues to be very good from industry to drive a new talent development um, environment a lot of correlation with what you're sharing there with what michelle actually was uh, recording in our Creativity for All course, where she yeah. talked about, I'm, I'm speaking in your words here, Michelle, but she talked about how the process is is just as important, in fact, probably more important than the outcome. You're talking about how grades are so important, the outcome, and we've mm. been so focused on that. But in fact, it's the process leading up to that potential grade, if, that, if there needs to be a grade, that is what creativity is all about. And if you do get a chance to see I'm talking to everyone now. If you do get a chance mm -hmm. to do the Creativity for All course, which was the um, the base prerequisite to becoming an Adobe Creative Educator, you'll see some of the wisdom of Michelle Dennis in those recordings. Michelle, would you agree with me there? Wow, that's a really hard call. <laughs> I will say that is an amazing course with many, many wonderful um, thought leaders from Adobe there that 
really, I do think it makes you think about why we're there and what we can mm. do to make our students better prepared for their future. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've had the privilege of doing both of those courses and they're absolutely fantastic. And um, on the next uh, presentation, I'm hopefully going to show you how we've knitted them into a new um, leadership credential, if you like, to drive that change. And I'll, hopefully it'll be part two of um, hopefully this discussion. Fantastic. We'll look forward to catching up with you again later in the year. Thanks very much, Paul. Oh, thank you. Cheers. You're watching Inject Creativity Live. We now have about 20,000 teachers who have enrolled in the last, or at least enrolled in level one of the Adobe Creative Educator program that we just talked about. Please do promote this program with your colleagues via adobe.ly slash ACE. The focus is not on Adobe skills, but understanding the importance of creativity in education. Dr. Kitchen is running the next Be a Creative Educator course on May the 24th at 4 p.m. Adobe outside <laughs> Australian Eastern Standard Time. We don't have our own um, time zones <laughs> for Adobe, do we? No. Um, for anyone who'd like to be guided through the Level 1 course, more information can be found at bit.ly forward slash adobe dash edu dash creative. And, Michelle, I'm really excited to announce the first official face-to-face -face Adobe in Education professional learning event. If we can jump to that slide, Jerry, there we go. Will be taking place in Melbourne on the afternoon of Tuesday, the 8th of June at John Paul College in Frankston. It's so exciting that we can get back into face-to-face -face professional learning events. Adobe Education Leaders, Michelle Dennis and Justin DeLacy and Adobe Creative Educator, Tanya Moran, will be helping me run this event. Any teacher in the Melbourne region is welcome to join the session, so please let your Melbourne colleagues know about it. And if you are on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash a-U-S-A-E-L. It's a great way to keep regularly involved with the Adobe and education community. And I'm looking forward to our next Inject Creativity Live event, which will actually be live on Thursday night for a change, Thursday the 6th of May at 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Our AEL presenter will be Adobe Education Leader Lauren Sayer in Melbourne, who'll be focusing on her use of Adobe Spark. And our thought leader for the next episode is the amazing Brett Salakis, who recently became an Adobe Education Leader. Many of you would know uh, that he is the founder of the Twitter hashtag Aussie Ed. And for those watching the recording of this episode, join us live if you can in the future. It's always more fun and interactive if you're live. Um, and for those of you who are live, get ready to move to bluejeans.com forward slash kitchen dot adobe for our fireside chat. And then we'll see you all in two weeks. Thank you, Michelle, for stepping in as co-host for this episode. I think she deserves a round of applause. She did a fantastic job. Also, thank you to our other special guests, Stephen Colbert, Paul McLean, Bronwyn uh, Wade Leeuwen, and Angelina from Asquith Girls High School. Also a special thank you to Jerry Wong behind the scenes there, Jerry. And as we finish this episode, we'd like to pay a particular tribute to Dr. Chuck Geske, one of the co-founders of Adobe, who sadly passed away last week at the age of 81. In a tribute to Chuck, Shantanu Narayan, who's Adobe's CEO, wrote, this is a huge loss for the entire Adobe community and the technology industry for whom he has been a guide and hero for decades. Chuck and John Warnock developed groundbreaking software that has revolutionized how people create and communicate. Their first product was Adobe PostScript, an innovative technology that provided a radical new way to print text and images on paper and sparked the desktop publishing revolution. Chuck instilled a relentless drive for innovation in the company, resulting in some of the most transformative software inventions, including the ubiquitous PDF, 
Acrobat, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, and Photoshop. Rest in peace, Dr. Chuck Geske. And that is going to be concluding our show. We'll just get Rob the Robot to do the final thing. Thanks again, Michelle, for uh, being part of it. I'm just looking forward to that ending video. And we'll say goodbye to everyone now. All the best. Bye-bye. Well, Alex, thank you so much for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. For those who are watching live, join us via bluejeans.com slash kitchen.adobe for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters, as well as complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out more about dates and topics. On behalf of Dr. Kitchen and Erin Rathke, don't forget to keep being creative. Bye.